Good morning, everyone. This is Jeffy Kennedy, author of Epic Fantasy Romance. I'm here with my first cup of coffee. Amazing. Today is, I have no idea. Oh, it's Monday. <laughs> I wanted to say, is it Friday? No, gosh, I'm so mixed up. It's Monday, August 28th. And I've realized that I've forgotten to mute my phone. Uh, acute listeners out there will note that I am inside today. Uh, that is because my darling friend, the fabulous Kelly Robson, is visiting me right now. Uh, she came up with me after Bubonicon. And so she is actually hanging out in the Grape Arbor because it's a wonderful place to be. And I invited her to be out there. And so I am inside. Uh, so yeah, had a great time at Bubonicon this weekend. Saw a lot of terrific people. It's, you know, always fun to people. Um, love that about sort of emergence from our pandemic isolation. It was also the first conference that I've been to where masking was not mandated. A few people did still wear masks, but for the most part, people were not wearing masks and it was, yeah, it was great. It was freedom. Uh, not going to lie. I know that a lot of people still feel strongly about masking, but it was, it was really nice. It was nice not to have to mask. And it was kind of funny because like I would be walking into the main conference area, <coughs> excuse me. And I kept feeling like I was forgetting something right by not putting on a mask. <laughs> so a lot of great representation at Bubonicon. For those of you who don't know, I get this question on occasion is why is our local New Mexico science fiction and fantasy conference called Bubonicon. This was number 54, so it's been going for a long time. And it is called that because of bubonic plague, because uh, New Mexico is one of the very last places where there is bubonic plague in the wild. Not that it really comes up much, um, but it is out there. And so the mascot for the conference is Perry the Rat, and there you have it. Uh, so it's always interesting being at the conference and hearing people say to me that they listen to the podcast, which, you know, like, I know that you're out there because I can like see the listening numbers and so forth, but, so, and some of you comment, but a lot of you are, you know, you listen, thank you. And like, when you see me at conferences, say something to me about it. So I did get a piece of feedback that the podcast is sometimes too quiet. And uh, so, Mom, you are totally vindicated. I, I always telling her, you're the only one who says that it's too quiet. And I tell her it's, you know, she needs to turn up her laptop volume or she needs to put in her earbuds or her hearing aids, uh, which she doesn't like to wear. And so, but somebody else said to me that sometimes it's too quiet and then it'll be too quiet. And like, then there's a loud startling noise. So I am trying to fix this. I have changed the gain on the microphone. So hopefully it will be, and I could see that it's much louder today. So hopefully this will help. So, um, trying to think of what, all, one thing I want to tell you all before I forget is that I have new headshots. Uh, you may have seen that. I posted them on Friday, got those up on social media. So um, my other ones were something like, uh, I think I had them done in like 2009 or 2010. So I don't know. Update them every decade, whether I need it or not. It's one of those things where like you'd rather keep your younger self as your headshot. But then when you meet people and they say things like, you don't have black hair, you have red hair <laughs> or acknowledging the fact that my face does indeed change over time. Uh, I know of a couple of authors who kept their youthful author photos. I felt like way too long because there's nothing more disconcerting than like knowing an author is in her fifties. I just had a birthday, right? Um, still in my fifties though. Uh, but then like seeing their author photo 
that when they're like 30 or 40. Uh, time marches on, not changing the photograph doesn't change that. So new headshots. Um, if you happen to notice I'm using an old headshot somewhere, let me know. I'm trying to update those everywhere. Uh, they're pretty fun. I like them. Uh, they were done by Richard Mann. At, he took them at Nebula Conference, and I just got the processed version. So uh, I think he did a great job. It was um, They're different than my previous headshots, and I like that. Um, let's see. So feedback on Bubonicon. Uh, yes, because I talked to you all on Friday. I had to think about where I had last updated you. So you know I was on vacation. Uh, I did not write over the weekend. I did not write at Bubonicon. I thought about it and I was just like not feeling it. Uh, so this goes back to this thing of like, when do you hold your feet to the fire? But you all know that I typically don't write on the weekends anyway. And I was spending a lot of time talking to people and I thought, okay, well, this is why I am at a conference is to have conversations with people. Uh, one of the funny things about having conversations with people was that on Sunday morning, the topic came up repeatedly of people looking for uh, science fiction and fantasy writing community. Uh, why don't we get together more often than just in the bar at the Marriott for Bubonicon? It was really great talking to people. So I had wonderful conversations. I'm just going to name uh, some people. You know, Carrie Vaughn comes down from Colorado, and it's always great talking to her. Uh, oh, and in fact, I need to make a note. Uh, I asked Carrie Vaughn to give a uh, a talk for SIFWA. She ran a very successful Kickstarter. And when I asked her to do it, at first she said that she felt like she wasn't an expert on it. And I said, well, no, this is exactly what we want. Because she had to learn what she was doing. She's an established author. But she learned how to reach her existing audience and create this Kickstarter from scratch. And I said, you are exactly the kind of person that we want to, to be talking to people. So, and, and she said, the more she thought about it, the more she realized that she did have a lot to say that she had learned so much. Um, and, and the counter to like having someone who's really expert is people forget what they didn't know when they started and it's still all fresh in Carrie's mind. So hopefully we'll get that. Um, other people that I saw, Will McCarthy came down from Colorado, Lou J. Berger, uh, more local people there were, um, Arkady Martin and her wife, Vivian Shaw, who is also a wonderful writer and editor, had a long conversation with them and with Diana Rollins. Uh, Kelly Robson was Toastmaster. Rebecca Roanhorse was there as one of the co-guests of honor, along with Carrie, uh, and I'm probably forget. Oh, the fabulous Dorinda Jones was there, hung out with her some. So one of the things we were talking about, I was introduced uh, by Will McCarthy to a new writer who's coming down from moving from Colorado to Albuquerque and looking to incorporate in the community. And then I talked to a couple of other authors um, who had a booth in the dealer's room. Uh, they're just starting to write stuff self-publishing. Um, and, you know, it's interesting how writers don't necessarily, you know, like they start self-publishing, but they don't incorporate themselves into the community. Uh, they don't necessarily know who else in the area is writing the same kind of thing that they write. So anyway, um, I've been meaning to do this for a long time. We've been talking about doing it pre-pandemic. And so now the time has come because I had like this come up three separate times. So it's like, okay, universe, I hear you. I hear you. Uh, and I want to start organizing some regular monthly meeting, regular meetings, not necessarily monthly, maybe monthly. Um, some like just Santa Fe folks, but then also uh, maybe combined Santa Fe and Albuquerque folks. Cause it's just really nice to have those writerly conversations. Uh, yeah, so so that was really fun to do. What else about Bubonicon? Of course, lovely to have Kelly come. She did a great job as Toastmaster. And 
it's great to have her visiting here today. I am hoping to get back on track with writing, but it's also going to be a little bit piecemeal with her being here uh, today. We're going up to town 10,000 waves around midday. So that'll be fabulous. Uh, one of the things that happened was my car. Some of you know that I have this. At this point, it's like antique. It wasn't antique when I got it, but I have a 96 Jaguar XJS convertible. And uh, which, you know, now it's over 20 years old. Coming up on 30 years old, right? Yeah, because it was 25 years old in 2021. So it's funny because I don't regard it as being an old car, but then people look at it and they're like, wow, why don't you have like one of those antique car license plates and stuff? I was like, my baby, my baby isn't old and neither am I. <laughs> but um, I, I've i learned. So there's this thing about this Jaguar is better than some of the older models, but there's still funky things about the wiring. And I ended up explaining this to several different people because I inadvertently left the lights on when I arrived on Friday, which was my bad. But it's also silly easy to leave the lights on in that car because it's not automatic like newer cars and it's a toggle switch and you can't tell which way it is and so I'd driven through some really bad thunderstorms I turned on the lights when I see other people have their car lights on I turn on mine uh, since I don't have the sensor right uh, and then I even when I pulled in I made it was bright sunshine again and I checked to make sure but I apparently checked the wrong direction. I thought, oh, I've had them on, so I need to turn it off. I looked, and it didn't look like they were on. But apparently that night, the hotel personnel noticed they were on. But they didn't have any way to tell me <laughs> uh, that because they didn't have me registered. They don't record license plates. So uh, when Kelly and I went out Sunday morning to put our bags in the car to check out of our room, uh battery was dead. In fact, it was so dead that uh, it could not take a jump. Uh, first, one of the hotel people, the Marriott people were really great. So George from security came out and he brought the little portable charger and tried to jump and it wasn't enough. And we decided, well, maybe the portable charger hadn't been charged enough. So we let it go in and charge for a couple hours. And then another guy came and helped me. That wasn't enough. And then he brought his car around and used jumper cables to do it. And I could see the battery charge. It was not taking charge. Um, and, you know, one thing about this car is it drains the battery. And you all probably have heard me talk about this before because I think it's so funny. My mechanic says to me, you know, like, You've got to take it out on the highway sometimes. Like, apparently I am the modern equivalent of the little old lady who drives only to church and the grocery store. <laughs> I mean, I like drive to Ryder Coffee. I drive to get my nails done. Uh, occasionally I drive down to Albuquerque. But um, I have learned, which I, I think this is really interesting, because um, even my friend Kelly said, well, once you get the battery jump, then you have to go drive it around for a while. And I said, aha, actually just sitting there idling is enough. And one thing I've learned to do is that if I have a trip that's less than 20 minutes, uh, to leave it idling in the driveway that until I've hit at least 20 minutes, because my mechanic has explained to me that the amount of charge to start the car, um, is balanced out by 20 minutes of running. Uh, even if it's just idling. Uh, so I have apparently gotten much better about this because the battery was four years old. For a while, I was draining it dry within the two-year warranty, but I did better this time. And clearly, the battery was about done. So <laughs> I had to get a new battery. And so uh, my wonderful friend, Jim Sorensen, drove me over to like O'Reilly Auto Parts and we got the new battery. And fortunately, I was clever enough to think of, ha ha, well, we need a tool <laughs> to do this on the hotel parking lot. So bought the tool for it as well. Uh, Jim was my hero. He swapped out the battery for me, but it like wasn't bolted in right and all of this. He's like, it should be good enough to get you back to Santa Fe. But the upshot was I had to go to my mechanic this morning and like 
mess up his schedule and have him help me bolt in or bolt in the battery for me again. The really sad part is that apparently I blew a fuse on my radio. And so now my radio is not working. And my mechanic drew the line there. He's like, I have cars to fix. I'm like, this counts as car to fix. But no, um, he also didn't charge me. So, you know, Rickers can't be choosers. Um, other things from the conference. It was kind of funny um, being back in the land of science fiction and fantasy to the exclusion of all else. Uh, there were a couple of weird, weird things. Um, my, my friend who writes, and I won't say who it is, who writes a combination of paranormal and romance and another genre was on a panel about, I'm going to just pick one because I don't want to say what it is, but I'm going to say like history. Okay. Let's say that she writes, um, history with paranormal and romance in it. And it was a panel on writing history and all of the different subgenres. And the moderator kept asking her about romance and saying, well, you write history, you write romance with history. And she was like, well, you know, I, I wouldn't put it exactly that way that I do have romance in my books, but I also have paranormal elements and the historical elements are very strong. And like at one point, the moderator, but she said every single question the moderator asked her had to do with romance. It was always with, oh, but you write romance. And this is funny. After a couple of weeks ago, when I was telling you all about my experience on the panel at Willamette Writers, which by the way, Willamette Writers paid me so nicely for doing the stuff that I did there for the master class and everything. Uh, if you're an author, Willamette Writers is a great conference to go to, really. They treated me so well. Uh, but so back to this panel, like every question that she posed to my friend had to do with romance. And even like they were talking about characters having flaws. And she said, well, what do you think, Jeffy's friend? Uh, would you say that your heroine's flaw is romance? Okay, I'm waiting for you all to react to that because I, when my friend told me that, I went, what? <laughs> and I like actually screeched. And she's like, how is, and she's, she replied, she said, I don't regard romance as a flaw. How is romance a flaw? Um, it's just this weird, weird perception. Uh, and somebody said something to me that I found um, really, it bothered me. Um, and it had to do with romance. And I, I won't say more than that, but it's like, I don't know. There's a certain segment of people who feel like that romance is lesser, that it's not, not as valuable, that it's not as artistic, that it's, that it's not actually art, that you'd say something like, well, is the flaw romance? <laughs> uh, and then there's, you know, people feel a certain segment of people. And, and I should say that most people are really wonderful and very embracing of it, but that there are some people who simply um, feel like it's okay to, to laugh at romance, to, to treat it as a lesser genre and to be like, Oh, you know, it's not actually, you know, back to my whole thing of romance is not antimatter. So I don't know. It's, it's one of those things. It's like, do you keep fighting it or do you just turn to blind, turn a blind eye? Uh, some conferences are worse than others this, this way. It kind of makes me not want to go to science fiction and fantasy conferences. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have that many others, but I don't know. It's this constant re-examining of why do you go to conferences? What are you trying to do there? Um, Kelly asked me how much I, you know, how I was enjoying Bubonicon. And I said, well, I'm enjoying it, but it's also the same group every year. It's not like I'm gaining new readers. Uh, it's fun to talk to people, but you know, what am I really getting out of it professionally? Hard to say. Whereas going to something like Willamette Writers, I met so many new people and so many new readers. So, you know, I hate to break things down to direct ROI, but at the same time, I have to be thinking about 
my career, right? And especially if I'm around people who don't regard me as a legitimate fantasy writer, should I go to a conference where I'm there, you know, as a fantasy writer? Uh, you know, am I an imposter? So um, that's where my thoughts are right now. Uh, but overall, it was great to see people. Eastern New Mexico University, have to give a shout out to you folks because you were so well represented. It was great that so many of them came up. They are the sponsors of the Jack Williamson Lectureship, which I talk up frequently. Uh, that's a really great event, and I enjoy doing that. So um, I'm going to try to get some work done before we head up to the spa. I hope you all had a great weekend, and I hope that you have a fabulous week uh, where people recognize your contributions for the valuable things that they are, regardless of the label. You all take care. Bye-bye.